All right, so today we got to discuss the uh, the triangle mid-segment theorem. Again, this is just like what we were doing last time with ortho-center. This, this is very heavy algebra-based. I still need you guys to start coming in for algebra help if you're still struggling with algebra. Distance formula, again, you don't have to memorize this. Be familiar with it. You'll have it on the formula sheet. Slope formula, again, don't memorize. Be familiar with it. And midpoint formula. First, you know, what exactly is a mid-segment? They didn't give you a spot to define it, so I defined it for you there at the top. What is a mid-segment? It's a segment that joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. So I've got a triangle, I find the midpoints of two of the sides, and then I connect them. That's what a mid-segment is. Example one wants us, okay, in triangle GHJ, show that the mid-segment KL is parallel to GJ, and then show that KL is one half of GJ. So we do some algebra. If we remember how to find the midpoint, again, the, the formula was up top. The mid-segment goes from the midpoint of one side to the midpoint of the other. So first we find the, mid, the, the midpoint of GH. So I add up my two X's and divide by two. I add up my two Y's and divide by two. GH is right here negative 7 plus negative 5 and a negative 2 plus 6 gives me my midpoint of negative 6 2. I then find the midpoint of HJ. Midpoint of HJ, again add up your two X's and divide by 2, add up your two Y's and divide by 2 and you'll get that your midpoint is at negative 2 4. So now what I want to do is I want to find the slope of KL. KL is right here. Those are the two points that we just found because we found the midpoint of HG and we found the midpoint of HJ and those two midpoints are K and L. So we just found the points KL. So the slope of KL, we do, we subtract our Y's on top. So I have 4 minus 2, which is on top. And then I have minus 2, minus 6, minus 2, minus negative 6, which gives me a slope of 1 half. So the slope of KL is 1 half. Slope of KL is 1 over 2. Now I'm going to find the slope of GJ. Because I'm trying to show that these two are parallel. And if they have the same slope, then they are parallel. So what is the slope of GJ? G J again, um, subtract your y's on top, so I have 2 minus negative 2, and then I have 1 minus negative 7, which gives me 1 half. So the slope of KL, the slope from K to L, was 1 half. The slope of GJ was also 1 half, so same slopes, so KL is parallel to GJ. So we just showed that they are parallel. Now I have to show that KL is one half of GJ. So K to L, this distance from K to L is one half the distance from G to J. And we'll just use the distance formula for that. Slide it up so we can still see the picture. So the length of KL, length of KL, the length from K to L. I use my two points. Again, the, my formula is up top is already cut off. You should still be able to see yours. I have to subtract my x's. It says x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared and then I gotta find the square root of that. So if I'm looking for KL I'll do negative 2 minus negative 6 subtract your two x's. Negative 2 minus negative 6 plus 4 minus 2 squared which gives me 2 root 5. If you're confused where this comes from, we haven't talked a whole lot about roots yet. I'll explain more about this in class. This is just equal to 2 root 5. If I scroll down and I find the length of GJ from G to J, again, subtract your x's. So it is 1 minus negative 7 squared plus 2 minus negative 2 squared, which is 4 root 5. So I can scroll down 2 root 5 is equal to 1 half 4 root 5. 2 root 5 
is equal to 1 half for root 5. So KL is 1 half of GJ. So we just showed that they are parallel and that the mid-segment is 1 half of the length of GJ. Which is, it is what it, it just shows down below. It states the same thing. But we just sort of worked out an example. A mid-segment of a triangle is parallel to the side of the triangle. In this, the DE is parallel to AB. And its length is 1 half of AB. So DE is parallel to AB and it is one half the length of AB. And we just saw an example of how that works. Now the math, these examples are, are, are pretty simple. It wants us to find how long UW is. UW is right here. It is a mid-segment, so it should be one half this length. So UW is one half of ST one-half and ST is 7.4 so UW has to be 3.7 this length has to be half of that length okay another example measure of angle SVU SVU again if these lines are parallel if UW and ST are parallel then I have a transversal right here and we should remember that alternate interior angles are congruent so if this angle is 41 degrees SVU, which is an alternate interior angle, also has to be 41 degrees. Keep scrolling. They want to see how long JL is. JL is right here. But JL has to be twice as long as the mid-segment. So JL has to be two times as long as PN. So JL equals 2PN. 2 times, if PN is 36, then JL has to be equal to 72. Because JL is twice as long as PN. PM, where is PM? PM is right here. So PM, this mid-segment, has to be half as long as this side. So PM has to be half as long as KL, has to be half of 97, which is 48.5. And the measure of angle M, L, K, M, L, K. Notice again I have parallel lines, MP parallel to KM. I have transversal right here, so I have corresponding angles. So if JMP is 102, then MLK must also be 102 degrees. Done with this side. We've talked about this stuff already. We've talked about triangle inequalities we had to cover it before the SCA so I, I will ignore this top part I will, we've talked about this too my objective here we're going to apply inequalities in one triangle and again, we've talked about this a little bit a triangle is formed by three segments but not every set of three segments can form a triangle and we have talked about this we haven't seen a picture really so if I have ABC the sum of any two side lengths of a triangle has to be greater than the third side. So AB plus BC must be greater, not just equal, greater than AC. BC plus AC must be bigger than AB, and AC plus AB must be bigger than BC. We, we've talked about this, so I'm, so I'll sort of breeze over it. So tell, can I have a triangle with side lengths, side lengths, uh, side lengths 7, 9, and 19? No, why not? Because if I add 7 plus 9, that is 16. 16 is less than 19. It doesn't work. It must be bigger. If I add all these up to 2.3 plus 3 plus 1 is bigger than 4.6. If I add any two, it is bigger than the third one. So yes, I can have a triangle here. This next part is the, the new part in this section. The distance from San Marcos to John Sissi is 50 miles. From Seguin to San Marcos is 22. So I've got it labeled here. What is the range of distances from Seguin to Johnson City? So what is the range over here? So I have this, this is 50, this is 22. What are the ranges for the possible distances from Seguin to Johnson City? So let me explain what I did. So I did D plus 22. So this length plus this length. Again, any two sides of the triangle must add up to be bigger than the third side. So I did D plus 22 has to be bigger than 50. So D plus 22 has to be greater than 50. So try 22 from both sides and I get D must be bigger than 28. So there's one restriction. D has to be bigger than 28. Alright, then I did it again. 
and I say, well, D plus 50 has to be bigger than 22. But again, I should be able to add up any two sides of the triangle, and it's bigger than the third side. So D plus 50 must be bigger than 22. Subtract 50 from both sides, and I get D must be bigger than negative 28. And again, if I'm talking about distances, I don't really want a negative distance. So then I can do 50 plus 22. 50 plus 22 must be bigger than D. So 22 plus 50 must be bigger than D. So 72 must be bigger than D. So D must be less than 72. So there are my two restrictions. D must be less than 72. And from over here, it must be bigger than 28. So D must be bigger than 28. And D must be less than 72. Again, we'll talk more about those in class. Just be familiar with it. Again, the back side, we have talked about this as well. In a triangle, the largest angle is opposite the longest side, and the smallest side is opposite the smallest angle. I'll brush over this real quick. Find the biggest side. Find the smallest side, the, si the, the, the angle smallest, uh, the angle opposite the smallest side is my smallest angle. The angle opposite the biggest side is my biggest angle. So if I go from smallest to largest, I get angle F's the smallest, then angle H, and then angle G. This one did not give me angle R, but I can figure it out. It's got to be 48. So my side lengths from shortest to longest have to be QP, QR, PR. All right, this next one. They give us, how many targets? One, two, they give us four targets. I'm out there playing frisbee golf, and I can only travel along the paths that are marked. And it wants to know which two targets are closest together. So this is what I did. I first filled in all the angles. If this is 47 and that's 69, means that angle has to be 64. And these both have arcs, though those are the same, which means that's got to be 64, which means that's got to be 56. Okay. I then covered up the bottom triangle, and I just listed these three side lengths in order. Which one has to be the smallest side? Well, 56 is the smallest angle, which means that side 24 must be the smallest side. Again, only looking in this triangle. What's got to be the next smallest side? Side 1, 2. And side 1, 4 must be the biggest side because it's opposite the biggest angle. So I just ranked them. Side 2, 4 is less than side 1, 2 is less than side 1, 4. Only looking at the top triangle. I then did it again only looking at the bottom triangle. So side 2, 3, 2, 3 must be the smallest side in this triangle because it's opposite the smallest angle. So side 2, 3 must be smaller than side 4, 3, which must be smaller than side 2, 4. So notice, 2, 4 is the smallest side in this triangle, but it is the biggest side in this triangle. So if I combine these two inequalities, I have side 2, 3, which is smaller than side 4, 3, which is smaller than side 2, 4, and then going to the top, 2, 4 is smaller than side 1, 2, and side 1, 2 is smaller than side 1, 4. So side 1, 4 is the biggest side in this picture, and side 2, 3 is the smallest side in the picture. So which two targets are closest together? 2, 3 is the smallest side, which two targets are furthest apart? Again, assuming I'm staying on the path, one, four has to be the two furthest apart. 